Hey guys, Nacho here, and today we're going to be doing a ninja showcase here in Hydra. I know a ton of people have him, and he's definitely a little bit of a sore topic for a lot of people, but he is still a great Hydra DPS option for a lot of people, and uh, a lot of people have kind of strayed away from doing a showcase for him, so I figured I would do one. I've been pushing this team. I was using this for the Rathalos team, and then I actually was just like, well, I wonder what else kind of attack champions could I slot into this team to make it really work, and ninja was one of the first options that I chose and he works insanely well so uh let's just get right into it a little bit now these builds are crazy we'll show them at the end but here we go so this team is basically the format that most people are using for really big damage in hydra right now and it's basically two hanarok michinagi and then you're going to use either two uh krisk or grazer for this in that slot and then you pick an ally attacker usually either cardiel or makage to synergize with your other dps champions if you're going to use somebody like ninja you have to bring increased attack um and if you're bringing somebody like ninja you also want to be bringing something a, a leech really um or something for him to stay alive either a second ally attack would work as well um if you wanted to run cardiel instead of masha led I, my masha led's kind of really good so i have uh, preferred to use him but yeah, you just set up the team like that for the most part, and then you just press auto and let it go. Uh, not really. You can't really auto too much with two Hanarok. She's kind of a pain in the butt. But Ninja's inter uh, synergy with Mikage is insane. The extra A1s, just they go really insane because then Michinagi can, er, can join in with the Ninja attack and the, the Mikage attack like that so they end up scaling up really really high and this rotation is really good for magic champions and we'll just do like uh 50 turns or something like that here i've seen ninjas a1 scale as high as like 1.8 mil so far i think 1.7 mil so he definitely gets going pretty heavily. The uh, the big thing with this is I don't I actually don't know what the amount of stats I have if his A two is worth using until I have a bunch of decapitated heads. Like even and even then he only hit four hundred k per hit on the heads. So not quite sure on that one, but the the decreased defense from the A ones are just extra crazy, honestly. They may help this team just smooth out a lot of RNG. Um, and especially with your DPS slot here, you want to have something that has an A1 uh, decrease uh, defense. I'll get the block buffs here. Uh, A1 decrease defense is extremely powerful when you decapitate heads because usually you're using Michina uh, Michinaki's decrease defense to get the heads decapitated. So once you have them decapitated, you have to reapply both Hex and uh, Decrease Defense. And Michinagi has both of them in his kit, but he can't do both of them at the same time. And they both have to be off cooldown. And then the head has to stay alive. So there's uh, there's quite a few problems that go in with that one. Uh, I get Decrease Speed here. Let's see if we can uh, just Decrease Duration. That's why you want to manual your hydro runs, kids. You can get some uh, some rough side effects otherwise. Get too Hanarok to put her block buffs here and we'll be chilling. Should be fine with this. So, really happy with him in this uh, team overall. I think this is so far going to be my best format. Geralt would be absolutely insane. Um, in this team, I wish I had one at this point all of the ally assists that he has uh, or she is just crazy And see it's just the ninja attacks and then also Michinaki coming in there And then I do have Krisk in cursed gear for this set or for this team Now we're really starting to scale up 1.2 mil per per A1 here. 
And obviously I'm letting it auto, so we're losing a little bit of damage, actually. Um, I've seen as high as like 90 million at this point. So really, really impressed with this one, man. There's a little bit of RNG in the long term with it, with uh, Michinaki joining in instead of Ninja. But overall, it's, you know, there's a bunch of 50-50s. So I've actually shut off Makage's A2 for this team just to try and get more A1s because my ninja build is pretty good. And I'm actually not sure if more if uh, A2s are worth using very much with him. So I might try something else uh, on that end. I'll do the block buffs here. Now the HP burns are pretty good against suffering. Ow. I'm gonna hit Krisk now because he's still the increase defense or the ally protect not the increased defense do that but honestly even like into suffering he's doing extremely well. that's a 200k one so he's basically doing a max hp hit every single time suffering's got a lot of defense so it's kind of hard to really get it up there this a little bit of that make a little love get down tonight you know so yeah not, maybe not the absolute best run i've had with the team but still kind of showcases the uh the format of the team a little bit usually this team maintains about a three mil damage per turn i was running a uh, manual on stream there but Manual runs take a really long time, so just to kind of show you a more long-term thing with it. And everybody wants to see that juicy damage from Ninja. So I actually run counter-attack, the fear counter-attacks on him. I think it's uh, pretty decent, especially since he veils himself. Just a 20% chance, especially when you're using two Hana Rock or even uh, Shamael team. He excels really well when you do that. Just because he veils himself. You know, you're not really worried about him putting up a... Which is the main use of his A2. And this team is the veil. So when Torment's not around, I don't think it's a, a big deal. Yeah, but now we're starting to scale up 1.3 mil, 1.4 mil from the one before that. So we're probably going to get Wrath here. Get punished a little bit. <laughs> See, now we're kind of picking up pace a little bit more. Obviously, because Ninja keeps scaling up and up and up and up. And so, I think just putting... Because you really only have three turn, two turn buffs with three turn, or three turn cooldowns with two turn buffs on a lot of these champions, so you can really just run the Chris extend and be fine. I really don't think Makage's extra extend every turn or every uh, rotation is that detrimental if you don't run it. Meanwhile, you can gain a lot of damage out of having Ninja or Michinaki join in, and especially when they both join in like that. Um, off of a Mikage turn, you can just add a free 2 mil damage to the run. I feel like that's really, really, really strong. See, now we're just punching in damage. We chunk. I mean, uh, I have a plus 4 salad here, and the the Ninja and the Michinagi are just putting the salad to shame. Uh, on, salad has also one of the highest builds here. Um, we're going to go down a little bit. You got increased attack and whatnot. But you can kind of see the uh, the damage difference here. Much more of a manual team as well. So Michinaki just punches huge damage in. Um, Ninjas really start scaling up in the later runs. Um, I think one of, for my, one of my other runs, I had him at like 260 mil and Mashalette at 200 mil and Michinaki at 250 mil. So that would, and then he, and then of course, Mashalita decided to suicide himself. So 
just a quick little showcase there and then we will here's the masha lead build actually so he's pretty he's pretty decent 8.3k attack 376 crit damage and then we get the two on aura also in there <clears throat> um this is the ninja build he's looking pretty decent these days too 320 crit damage 7.3 attack and then 250 uh 250 speed um so yeah really happy with his and then here's the mastery he's actually went with helm smasher and then again the the fear counter attack i went with with this i'm i don't know i don't know if it's really worth it yet uh it could just be better to go with retribution but it's marginal difference um and maybe either cycle of revenge as well i do like cycle of violence so maybe just taking dropping stoked for cycle of revenge or retribution could be worth it and then uh, i guess there's the the masha led masteries are the same thing basically um especially since i'm running a leech i feel like heart of glory increases in value uh, with a lot of the aoe champions because you can heal the full off the first enemy that you hit and then you're at, at full hp with a lot of the other ones um previously I, I would suggest shield breaker on a lot of champions especially if you're not reaching a very high critical mass yet shield breaker while it may not do anything a lot of times it can help you save a lot of runs one of the most difficult consumptions are ones where you have shields as, as well as just shields on suffering in general or shields on heads that you're trying to get decapitated right now so shield shield breaker can just give you a lot of free damage especially on your raw damage dealers so if you're not really at quite a critical mass yet with your team, it can be uh, pretty helpful to go for some of those. Um, that is the other Chris. Here's this Chris. I'm actually running a, a presser on this Chris right now. Uh, here in Hydra Battles. So running Curse Set uh, near 300 speed, and that lets him basically solo provoke. Um, and then if you manual each of, each of the provokes, you'll make sure he doesn't waste it and things of that nature. A blood shield to help him out a little bit um and then i am running oppressor right this second you can go with war master as well war master actually heals really well uh, or you can go with a resist or accuracy um i was just kind of testing out oppressor to see how i liked it uh, with pulling taurus out of this team it was a little more difficult to keep his provoke up absolutely 100 percent, or at least in a large enough time frame for me to kill the heads so i was trying out a little bit of oppressor um, and overall pretty happy with it uh the extra turn meter is definitely nice there um, and then Michinaki, he's going with a uh, Helm Smasher as well, Stoke to Fury. And then we went down this way, giving him a little extra, little extra um, uh, turn meter from that. And then uh, Cycle of Violence, pretty decent, methodical. And bring it down. Uh, Heart of Glory uh, is pretty decent because he's joining in with so many decent, so many attacks, especially with the Leech. He's healing up pretty heavily. Um, and then here is his gear. So again, pretty decently geared at this point. He's one of the better champions on my account. So we have the uh, the two Han aura to bring him up above what the the accuracy that we need. And a couple of little masteries here, like Swarm Smiter coming in hand here, and uh, Charge Focus definitely. And then we were running who else was in the team? Uh, Makage. And really, I just have her in my arena build. I swapped a refresh amulet onto her. Um, so she is running at 378 right now uh, with enough accuracy. I, I guess if I had more resistance on her, that would be more useful as well. Run her more like a mischief tank. Um, I think I can run a resistant. Now I'm running an accuracy chest on her. So I'm just like focused very heavily on speed. Uh, if I had a reflex set that was above 330, I would probably swap her into a reflex set then uh but i don't feel like changing the gear every single week so i've just kind of got her in that you know right now so i don't want to don't want to swap all the gear for hydra every time so <laughs> but that is uh that's all of the team asshole ah you forgot to hot a rock sorry guys I forgot to build again. I mean, you guys are going to witch hunt me if I don't include this one. So here is the Tuhana Rock build as well. Um, yeah, just reflex set. I feel like reflex is insanely more valuable than relentless once you have a reflex set for her she is an insane mischief tank especially when you're using her aura her aura decreases the requirement for your team by a lot reducing your accuracy requirement isn't just 
reducing your accuracy requirement. It's reducing the strain that you're putting on the requirements of rolls on your gear. So to scale somebody like Michinaki, you're looking for speed, crit, crit, and accuracy. Well, every single piece that you don't have to look for that fourth stat, it's that much easier to look for, right? So you're not sacrificing crit damage to pick up accuracy. You're not sacrificing speed to pick up accuracy and stuff like that. So once you can start using accuracy auras, they far, far outweigh speed auras, okay? Um, and then as well as her, she is just insane in reflex gear. I am a big fan of her. I think that is the absolute best way to run her, especially when you're putting in herself in the lead, because when you're full, everybody's full HP, she just puts, uh, a heal on herself when she a one, she just puts the continuous seal on herself and that makes her a mischief tank. I think she mischief tanks more than Chris does at this point. Um, and then I have her in war master. I don't think this really does a whole lot, to be honest. I think oppressor could be just as good, if not better on her in a lot of situations. She just, she doesn't have any AOEs. She's got all single target. And if she puts the continuous heal on herself, it's only a benefit. So if, even if she is the one dropping a little bit low HP, she put a continuous heals on herself. That's good. She's making herself more of a mischief tank and taking it away from your DPS champions. So that is a very, very important part of this team. And that's why she also synergizes extremely well with champions like Mikage and Cardiel and other ally attack champions. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Have a good one.